Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. I want to welcome you to my felt ornament fiesta. I must confess to being a terrible crafter. I have not until now owned any felt. Yes, I have resisted the urge to get felt. And then Ellen brought out some felt. And she did something I have not seen. Maybe I just have not looked. But she came up with sets of felt in groupings. And she matched the threads along with the felts. So that like people like me who can't figure out all of that and it's just too much and our brains explode can just get the collections. She does have every one of these colors individually. And in the individual packs you get five sheets, but in these bigger packs, you get eight colors. You get one sheet of each of eight colors, and you can pick the kinds of things that you think you're going to be using for your felt projects and pick a collection that's going to work with that. They're not really expensive, and they have a really good selection of colors. I have put together these little images that have the actual names of each one of those colors over on my blog so that if you get one of those sets and suddenly you need to decide maybe you're going to replace one of those sheets or you really like this particular color, which one is it? Because they're not labeled. So how do you know which one's which? Well, on my blog you can tell. The colors, there are more than what's here in these sets. And I'm just going through each one of the sets so you can see the texture of each one of these colors as well. Some of them are more textured and I guess visually textured than others. And I thought it might help to flip through them. So before I started cutting and shredding these, I decided to be nice and film them all for you. So if you need to help, have some help in picking them out, you can do that. But there are also extra colors over on her site. You can stroll through all of them and see exactly which colors you like there are purples there and all kinds of things that are not in some of these sets but I got the sets because I wanted somebody else to do the work for me and the sets you can get the threads the little embroidery threads that go with them and not have to think about it and I really like not thinking <laughs> especially when I'm doing this mad frantic getting ready for Christmas and doing a ton of videos this is my busiest season of the year and I know it's only, you know, October, November, people are like, wait, it's not even Christmas time yet. I know that, but I try to do all this stuff ahead of time so that you guys can see all the stuff that's out there and decide what you want to use for your Christmas projects. So usually by like early November, I'm done with all my Christmas stuff, which is kind of nice. I do have a lot more cards that I need to get busy coloring and I'll spend November doing a lot of that, but at least most of my stuff is kind of done-ish. So when I put all mine together, I grouped them. If you want to see the comparison between all of the pinks and reds, I'm walking through those so you can see the difference between them. Uh, Ruby is really similar to Christmas red. Christmas red is just a little bit darker, has a little more texture, but you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And I got a couple sheets of some of these because there are some duplicates between the different collections that Ellen's put together. So there are some that, you, that I have multiples of for that particular reason. But I decided I'd walk through the blues and the greens, the reds, and some of the neutrals and stuff so that you can compare them. Because I know sometimes you're like, I need something that's going to be this particular color. Um, one of the other things that I tried doing as well, and I've you can sort of see I have little pins in the backs of some of these, <laughs> Because, yeah, I had them turned around the wrong way. But I put little notes on each one of them once I figured out which colors they were. And I pinned a note to them with the color name. So that I wouldn't have to think about it and go look it up. You could do the same too if you wanted. As you get your felt and mark them down. If you have other brands, you could mark down what brand it is and just pin it to it. And then you're not having a sticky back. I was considering doing labels, but I didn't want sticky glue on everything. So there you got to see the difference between the opal and the white. The white is really white white and the opal is just a little bit off white, a little pinkish. So now on to felt. I am so excited. I have not made felt ornaments and people have for years been on this felt kick and it went away and I was like, oh, I missed the felt kick. But I, like I said, I couldn't figure out how to buy felt. There was just too much to buy and too much to think about. 
So this made it easy for me. I'm glad felt is back. Thank you, Ellen, for that. And some of the dies that you'll find have little holes in them. This ornament and some of the other so cute ones, there's a bear and there's a snowman that Ellen has in her shop. And those have holes in them, but there's lots that don't. And I went through all of my dies and I just decided to pick out some other stuff. This one, I grabbed the Mondo Holly die and I cut the, you know, the big die and I cut it in half. And I decided I was going to put a spray of greens at the top of the ornament on both sides. So cutting it in half worked, except one of the halves was kind of boring. This little shape on this side was kind of blah. So I just took some scissors and I whacked off some in order to make it as detailed as the rest of it. And then I sewed it onto the other side. And I'm just sewing across the top so the leaves are a little bit on the fluffy side and just kind of hanging out. And then I found another die set that I had that had a little pine branch in it. And FYI, all of the ornaments that I'm making are on my blog and I list the colors that I used as well as the dies that I used. So if you're looking for particular die shapes, um, then you can find all of those out over on my blog. And I got one of the little bows that uh, Lawn Fawn comes out with these. And I love that their little middles that they have actually just fold around so it's all one piece. You don't have to cut out another little piece of a die. And it makes a little bow. And I cut two of these and put that on top. And I added some little berries. And the glue that I'm using is a glue that I found at my local little uh, craft store or my, my local little sewing shop thing. I went in and I said, I want to start working with felt and I don't know what to glue things on with. And the lady hooked me up. So you might find it um, cheaper in your store. I found it cheaper. It was like $5.99 in my store and it was like $8.99 on Amazon. I have a link for you on my blog so you can go see that if you wish. But look how cute that came out. It's just like fluffy and everything has all its little pieces hanging off. So then I had some other dyes that I wanted to try and I just went crazy with all my dyes. I got out my otters and my little otter wear that goes with it and has the little, um, the little heart shaped bit of, of greens and stuff for the otter to swim through. And I got the folk heart dyes out, but they don't have holes in them. So I just kind of made it up and and just started sewing. Mine are not even, and I don't really care. <laughs> Some people might care, but I'm like, yeah, I'm having too much fun putting this together. So in order to make the loop at the top, I just held my finger in there and kind of went around it a couple times and then did some stitching at the bottom to hold it in place. And when I was using three ply, because the, the embroidery floss is six ply, it has six strands, and I just separated it to do three. So I have loops that are three ply. And then when I finished it, I just did a little dollop of the glue to hold it down and that will dry clear. Got my little starfish on the back of that one. Isn't that cute? And I used a, a little bit of stickles in order to put the berries on there. And I had some liquid pearls for the whiskers. I cut out the little snout myself for the, the otter because he didn't really have <laughs> he didn't really have a face. It was just an outside shape. So you may have to figure that out if you start using animals. And the heart in that one is a heart from another die set. There was I don't believe that was a heart that was in that one. Maybe it was. I don't remember. This is a little bear that Ellen had last year. I think it was last year, a year before. And I gave him a tail. <laughs> he was just so cute. And I gave him wiggly eyes too. And this is the snowman that came out this year. And I did do him in watercolor, but you, you could also of course do him in felt but this time I decided not to make his arms stick out because I didn't want them to fall off I didn't know how to glue them on and have them not fall off so I made him hug the heart instead from the bear set and this one is an old mitten die that Ellen had and I decided to add the little snowflakes from the die set on there the little scallop thingy at the top I just used a long scallop die cut off a piece and then trimmed it down to match the size and shape of my mittens this is the rocket ship that came out recently too. I loved coloring it and it was just as much fun to make this out of. I sewed the fire in between the front and back of the rocket. And this one, I ended up cutting uh, opal for the main shape and then white for the lid. I just basically hacked off the kind of 
top part of it so that it would be a, a white lid. And then all of the little candies, all I had to do was add stickles and stuff to them to make them shimmery, shiny, and glue them down. Way fun and no calories, which is most excellent. This was a blast. This was the submarine and there's a couple little fish in there so I added snow to it as if it snows underwater I'm not really sure this one makes any sense but the little fish hanging down were a blast I cut two of the fish and then I just glued the string in between them so I have a, two little bits of threads hanging out from the middle these guys I cut out and I haven't put them on anything yet I think they're gonna go on cards because they're really tiny I used the hat from the bearware die set and then this little fox, these are both from the Arctic Pal set that I love to color. And I cut him out of the orange and the white so I could cut a tail, a nose, and a white belly for that guy. And this one, I haven't decided what to do yet. Maybe you can give me some suggestions. I wanted to do a ho, ho, ho with three little people and dress them up with stickles. And then I realized somebody might think I'm calling them hoes, and I'm not. So I might have to figure out something else to do with this one. So stay tuned. That'll be on Instagram once I figure out what to do with the letterboard set. Because the letterboard is really fun. You could just stick these on and change it around. And make yourself a little letterboard decoration in your house. And uh, it'll stick to the felt. Which is kind of fun. And I hung up all my ornaments in my little tree. I had a rainy day. And I went outside in the rain and tried to hang them all up on paper clips because I thought it would be fun and it was rather a silly idea. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you go out and make some crazy things with felt. And I will see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.